Guys, so this is the River Rossi passenger set. Um, I'm going to be putting lights into it. We're going to upgrade it with some um, metal wheels and KD couplers. I've actually cheated and I've already upgraded the couplers. Um, I do explain that later on in the video, just briefly how I did that. And I also explain what I did with the wheels. The wheels were metal wheels in the set, but the axles were actually covered with a plastic sheet. So we had to change that for um, installing the lights. What I'm going to be using for the power pickups, in some of my previous videos, I've actually made my own little um, brass wire wrap around the axles. The problem I found with that is you get a lot of friction, a lot of resistance, so it creates a lot of um, drag on the locomotives and it just doesn't roll well. So I've done the right thing. I've gone out and I've bought uh, DCC Concepts um, pickups. So you'll see there's nothing in here because I sort of cheated. I've already installed the springs on the on the trucks themselves. I'll show you guys now what I've, how I've done that and what I've done. Okay, so I don't know if the camera's picking it up too nice. There you can see. So two pickups on this side and two pickups on that side. Now, because of that, I'm going to be putting in a bridge rectifier and I'll put in a capacitor just to try and minimize the flickering effect. So how you install these, I'll show you the one. They pop the wheel out. It's got a plastic insert in the center. So you've got to get rid of the plastic ones and upgrade to these. So all I did was I pulled the one side of the wheel off and you slip your little, you slip this little, and then you just need to gauge your wheels again. All right. Okay, so wheel gauged and it's back in place. This one opens, pressing in these little grommets. Come on. And once you have them all out, the whole contraption slides out. Now this one's got a little bit of an interior. Some of these River Rossi ones didn't come out with interiors. Um, mine, I've already fitted, custom fitted um, KD couplers. All right. So all I've done is I've cut the, cut the bull hooks or whatever they had on off, and I just um, used epoxy resin. So we'll get that one out. All right. So I like drilling right next to that section there or somewhere close to that section there. Um, so if that's sitting in there, If that little one sitting there, I would drill right in that corner section there. Okay. So I'm not drilling all the way through. I think I've hit the plastic on the other side. Yes, I did. So what I might do with this one, I'll put my thumb on there and carefully drill through. Because if you don't do that, you're just gonna lift the floor up. Okay. So that's it pretty much right there. A little bit of a clean up and we'll pop this back in its place on one side you'll have a small wire looping up and from the other side you'll have a wire running all the way down to the bottom now there's a few way you can few ways you can do this um, running the wires on the sides is an option but you got to loop it around that little you got to loop it loop it around that otherwise when the, the, the roof section drops in, it's gonna catch on the wall, it's gonna. So another option is to run it at the top. Um, and if it sags, you're gonna see it. Uh, another option is to run it in the center of the floor, all the way down to the back, because once you have it like that, you will never see the bottom of the floor. Um, so you've got a few options, each to their own. I'll leave that up to you. Um, like cutting your wire, so I'm just using um, printer wire or so it comes in strands like this, and I just pull off what I need from there. I find that's nice and thin and cheap. This section gets tied onto one of these wipers, and then we just literally pull it out a little bit and then drop it down. It, um, it's all worth it in the end when you get to see the end result, you know? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on the bottom and I'll cut that little section off. I don't want solder on that because I'm still gonna wrap that around the opposite wiper. Okay, so let me do that quickly. 
the game. Now, a little bit there, a little bit there. Done. Okay. From there, I'll just cut that little section off. Okay. to the next one. Okay. Okay, same story. Hold that one down with a gator. And a bit of solder. Okay. So what we're sitting with is this. Now I know you, what you think you wire through that little hole we made. Excellent. Okay. Right. So we'll spin them around because we've got them, the wire coming through on the one side of the coach where the where the hole is that's where we want the wire coming through and all you do now is you pull them apart gently until you have the right length fit the one in clip it in place make sure there's no bind she rolls nice and freely and we'll move over and drag the next one in make sure there's no bind rolls nice and freely okay so that's pretty much what we're sitting with now down there, all right? Now, that looks like it's sitting high. It's not, believe me, that little wire there is not sitting up high. Um, you could just tidy that in and push that in underneath like so. So we'll do the same on this side, pop these wheels out. Now, this is the part where it's important for you to keep in mind this truck is polarized on the left side the other truck is polarized on the right hand side don't get it mixed up because that'll be a dead short okay we've tied it we've tied that one off so we'll just solder that one in boom okay and the same And that's pretty much it on the wheel pickup. That's how simple it is to get the wheel track power onto your trucks. So we'll feed this one through. I can't remember where we drilled the hole now. Oh dear. Oh, there we go. So. through a little bit now again guys make sure that your polarity is left and right otherwise you will have a dead short and then just pull that one further away the spring just unwinds as you pull it a little bit um, it doesn't put any tension or anything on the the wheels itself the spring lit literally just unwinds a bit okay so we'll Hide that one down there, same as the other one. Make sure your trucks wiggle, move freely. The LED strip we'll be using, I've already cut the little strip, but it comes in a, a roll of eBay like that. Capacitors for the keeper line. thing you need to be mindful of is the voltage. So 25 volts and over is probably what you want to use. 16 volts you're cutting it too close to the dcc um, track power and then just a little bridge rectifier so just a little bridge rectifier 
and that's just to take the DCC signal and clean it up to a constant positive and negative. Otherwise, this little chap will not be happy. Okay, this little strip I've cut um, doesn't actually show positive and negative. However, those little arrows on the sides, they indicate a positive pretend both sides because we're going to be soldering on both sides of the strip. Okay. And that side. Uh, like so. And I'll just pretend both legs on it. A little bit of solder. Okay. Guys, I'm not an expert on soldering, so if you see me doing anything wrong, leave it in the comments. If you have any advice, any tips, I'm open to constructive criticism. Just don't be overcritical. All right. Has to go where it says positive and negative, that has to go on the LED strip side, okay? So making sure on, on this little bugger, positive is on this side. So my arrow is also on, there's the little, hold on, there's the little arrow down there. So this side is positive, all right? Okay them in place like so and oops so it's in but it's too far to the one side so I'll just unsolder it for a second and just reposition it so I can catch both on the tab the, the pins don't 100% line up with the LED strip show you the camera so that's pretty much what we've done with that there make sure that it's a good contact beautiful okay Let's do the capacitor side. The capacitor side is a little bit more tricky. Gray line indicates negative on a capacitor, all right? So that needs to go on your negative side. Gently bend them down, and then I'm just going to cut. I'm just going to cut them in the corner, all right? All right, and all we're going to do is the same as what we did with the bridge rectifier. Get it in place. Okay. Right, show you there. So that's pretty much what we're gonna be sitting with. And now I can just gently bend that a little bit. Okay. So we'll drop that one down. Beauty. Okay. So that's, it's done for the soldering. No more soldering work for us. Um, <clears throat> now it's just gonna be a matter of getting that in place and hiding all these wires here. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be putting a little bit of tension on it and I'll probably just tape the back of that and then just run my strip back over it like so or I might actually just hook it on the inside of that I think I'll probably do that sorry guys I'm gonna take that off camera Okay, I think I'm in a place where I'm happy with the tension on that wire. I think it's gonna be out of sight. Now we'll grab the dome. The dome only goes in one way, so you gotta play with it a little bit and make sure it is lined up properly. I think that is the way. We'll spin it around and just see. Yes, so definitely that way around. Now, this is where things become a little bit tricky. With the long ones, it's not this complicated because you just hook it from the one side. 
this one, unfortunately, we didn't give ourselves enough leeway, so we sort of have to drop that in and try and maneuver it that way. Okay. So now I'll flip it onto the side for a second. Make sure we get that nice and tight. It's actually making a bit of a roll there, but I'm gonna put a dab of glue behind it. And once we close it, it'll just, the glue will just grab hold of it. So you can use crazy glue, you can use modeling glue. I'm just using PVA glue, because I find that it dries clear and it creates a decent bond. Okay. You just gotta be a bit more patient, which that is the hobby we're in. It's a hobby of patience, isn't it? All right, so a little bit there with a the toothpick. A little bit of glue, a little bit of glue. And at the back there, yep. The glue on these strips, they are deceiving. They don't hold. The strip will drop down eventually. So I just put a few strands of PVA across. If you use crazy glue on this, roof you'll stay in the window i can tell you i can guarantee you you'll stay in the windows because this whole thing is plastic uh, and I'm, when i say plastic i mean see-through plastic clear plastic clear plastic and crazy glue do not mix it will stain so you'll ruin it you'll have this frosty misting on the inside so if you're not using decent modeler glue use pva glue okay i think that'll be enough all right I'll flip her over so you can see what I've done. Oh, you can see on the camera. And then we'll just slide this over. Check your wiring. And drop it down. Okay. All right, that is it for the lighting. So let's take her over to the bench and see what she looks like on the track. So the LEDs that I chose, the strip that I chose is um, bright white. It's not warm white. The reason for that is I want to paint them later and paint, give them a yellow or a green tinge. Um, I think the white will be the best for it. We'll apply a bit of track power and see how we go. It does look bright, but it's not even throwing a reflective out on the side here. Um, oh, it has actually. But it's really hard when you can't when you can't focus in. Um, I'll, I'll put another one on that that I finished, and we'll try and just so you can have a bit of an idea. But for my, all intents and purposes, um, the brightness of the lights is not the issue here. The issue is that do you have wheel pickup, and do you have reliable wheel, wheel pickup, which is exactly what I have. Um, Guys, I'm having a bit of trouble with the lighting above. Um, it's a bit cloudy and overcast outside. So I've got a bit of light pollution, I think. I've closed the curtains, but then everything's too dark. Um, this is the other ones that I've done. So it's hard to see. I'm actually not happy about the lighting at the moment. Not the coach lighting, my actual lighting to show, to show you what's happening with these. I'll switch this off for a second. What I've done is, so this is white. They're all the same strips. It's from the same LED strip. So this is white, but which I've tinted yellow, white, tinted yellow, and just normal white. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this whole train. It'll have tinted yellow throughout, just to make it look like the blinds are closed or sleeper coaches have got little bed lamps or whatever. Um, once this is all done, I'll pop it down to the club. And the lighting down there is much better and you can actually have a good look at what's happening with it i'll pop the lights back on but you can't really see the interior it's super bright on the layout right now but believe me it's not that bright okay so look past the brightness of the lights we're just trying to gauge whether the lighting is working for you so that one you'll see it died it's because it's sitting on a insulated frog and it's only picking up on one side, all right? The capacitors can only do so much. There you go, all right?
a little bit of light bleed through the top, but that's something that you will have to fix yourself. That one was flickering. So I've got an insulated frog point there, guys, and when you're going slow, obviously, they're gonna drain some power. Okay. So on this one, actually, you can see, just switch that off. You can see I've actually taped up that corner section where the wires comes through. All right. So that's pretty, that's pretty much it.